My name is Lexi Jong and I like to talk about luxury beauty. Today we are starting a new series called Makeup Mondays. And with Makeup Mondays, what we are doing is we are taking a question or questions from you, the viewers, and I will do my best to answer this. Now these questions can be anything related to makeup, provided I have it in my collection and can answer it. But we're looking at things like, it could be like product updates, it could be a comparison between different things, it could be the search for a holy grail, you know, a wide variety of things. So if there are any questions that you have related to makeup that you think I could answer, please feel free to leave them down below in the comments and I will be selecting questions to feature in future videos. You can also DM me on Instagram, I'm at Alexis John. Now I wanna give credit to my friend Sean at Sean K Beauty. She is the one who actually gave me this idea. So she suggested this. She does something similar on her channel called Sean's Beauty Bar, where she discusses like ingredients and skincare concerns and so forth. And she takes questions from viewers about specific items and delves into them on her Beauty Bar videos. Originally I was planning on introducing this series this week and we would start with actual questions next week, but it turns out that I received the perfect question for our first video. So today's question comes from Diane and Diane is searching for the perfect satin lipstick. She's looking for something that is not drying, something that stays put, something that is not overly fragranced and feels comfortable on the lips. So she and I have gone back and forth over some different things that she has tried, that I've tried and so forth. And what I'm going to do to kind of help narrow things down is I'm gonna try on all of my satin lipsticks. So not all of the different shades and so forth, but every brand that I have, I'm gonna try on a shade from each of the satin or almost satin formulas and we're gonna take a look at the texture and so forth. I'll go through notes on each of those items. And hopefully with all of this, Diane will be able to find the perfect satin lipstick. And I hope it helps some of you as well because I know I've gotten a few other questions about satin formulas recently also. Now, before we start trying everything on, I wanna explain what I have on my lips right now so far. And this isn't truly a satin lipstick in the traditional sense. I'm wearing the Suku Comfort Lip Fluid Glow in shade 101. So this is from the Holiday Collection and it's a liquid lipstick, but as you can see, it does give kind of a satin finish and it's very long wearing. So I do like to pair a lip liner with these, but these will last pretty much all day. They're not transfer proof like the Chanel Ultra Tenue duos, but they really kind of stay put. They don't really migrate and they, you know, the pigment lasts all day. So even if it starts to wear off, you can totally top it with some lip balm or just kind of, you know, reapply a little bit and everything it looks great again. So I'm going to bring you in closer so you can see the actual finish. This is the finish on the Suku lip glows. And again, I think this is a really great option if you don't mind a liquid lipstick. First up, we're taking a look at the Sisley Lafita Rouge lipstick in shade 15 Beige Manhattan. This is a nice, comfortable satin lipstick. It has a beautiful finish that doesn't really seem to settle into fine lines. There are supposedly benefits to long-term use with this lipstick. I personally don't believe claims like that, so that would not be something I would factor into a decision. It is not incredibly long wearing. It is pretty average in longevity in my opinion, but it has a beautiful finish. Next up, we have a Rouge Hermes lipstick in shade 18, Rose on Seine. And this is a, another nice satin formula. It's a little bit thinner in consistency on the lips. There's also a little bit more of a shine to it than the Sisley has. Again, just like the Sisley, I don't find this to be long wearing, but it is a very nice formula. 
Next, we are looking at the Cojendo Meifangshi Lipstick in PK02. This is the new formula that was released this summer. And this is a satin formula, but it is very sheer. So I think it's an okay formula. It's not the best. And in some shades, it can be a little patchy and it's not super long wearing. This is definitely not one of my favorites. Next up, we have Cure Weiss, and this is the shade Gracious. This lipstick is a little bit firmer in the bullet, so there's more drag as you apply it to your lips. It does feel creamy once it's on there, but it is a little bit harder, a little bit firmer when you are applying. And in my opinion, it just, the color does not look as smooth. Um, it's comfortable on the lips. It does have a very strong scent to it. Again, this is one that is not going to be one of my favorites. This is a Lancome Lapsalu Rouge lipstick in number 306 Vintage Ruby. And this is one of their cream formulas. So on here, it specifically says Ruby Cream. And this is going to be a little bit of a thicker lipstick meaning that there's a little bit more drag when you apply this to your lips and it goes on opaquely fairly quickly and it is ultra creamy. So you can definitely, you don't need a lot of passes with this to get that thick creamy feeling on your lips. Longevity is fairly good on this lipstick. This particular shade isn't great for me, but the formula is very nice. And you can see that it has more of a traditional satin cream finish than some of the other formulas that we are trying out today. This is a Guerlain Rouge G in the satin formula and this is the shade number 96 and this is definitely one of my favorite formulas. You can see it has a beautiful satin sheen, sheen to it. The wear time is average four or five hours or so and I think it's very comfortable on the lips. The one drawback here is that it does have a fragrance and the more you wear them, the more you get used to it, and, you know, the more you open it, the more diffuse it gets, but there is a fragrance for it. And if there wasn't that scent, it would probably be my favorite or my second favorite satin lipstick formula. We are now looking at a, another Guerlain lipstick. This is one of the new Sheer Shine formulas that was released this year. And this is the shade 688. And you can see that these are going to be a sheer lipstick. And they are a bit firmer in the tube as well. So there's a little bit more drag applying them. They feel creamy and comfortable on the lips, but they are going to have a thinner, more sheer texture to them. Some of the shades with more glitter in them can feel a little gritty upon repeated application. This is not one of those shades, but I have noticed that with some shades that I have. This is Natasha Denona I Need a Nude in 33NP Noah, and you can see that this actual formula has a similar appearance to the Lancome Lapsalu Rouge on the lips. Obviously the color here is very different, but it does have more of that cream look to it. And they actually both feel pretty similarly on the lips. They're very comfortable. This one is easy to go on and it has a little touch of that vinyl texture to it, which differentiates it from the Lancome, which feels a little bit more like a traditional cream than this one does. But again, they do seem to have a similar appearance. The Natasha Denona lipstick has a strong scent and it is one of those cosmetic vanilla scents. And I say cosmetic vanilla because it doesn't smell like real vanilla, it smells like artificial vanilla. So there is definitely a strong scent for that and it may be overpowering to some. We are taking a look at the Rouge à Lèvres lip color in number 78, Love Crime from Tom Ford Beauty. And this is a beautiful medium weight texture satin lipstick. And it's not too thin, it's not too thick. It has a beautiful sheen to it. 
longevity on this is slightly above average with these darker shades you definitely have pigment that will hang around a little bit longer than some of the lighter shades but even with lighter shades in this formula you are still going to get at least four hours of comfortable wear i have not noticed any drying with the satin formula of these lipsticks and i think this would be a nice option this is a rouge pure couture lipstick from yves saint laurent and this particular one is from the Zoe Kravitz collection last year. It's shade 121. And I think this is another nice option. I actually feel like this line of lipsticks is underrated. And it is light and creamy on the lips. It's, it's probably a bit more of a moussey texture once it's on your lips than many of these others. Obviously, it is firm enough to be in a lipstick bullet. It's not a true mousse style texture, but that's a little bit more of the feeling that you have on your lips. So if you're looking for something light and creamy, this is a good option for that. There's also no discernible scent with these. This is a Givenchy Le Rouge Givenchy lipstick in number 103, Brun Creator. And I think this is a, another brand with great lipsticks that doesn't get enough attention. You can see that this is a beautiful satin finish and it's not going to be quite as opaque of a cream on the lips as some, such as the Lancome or the Cure Weiss, but it definitely has a bit of that cream texture to it. It's just a little bit lighter in weight. This is fairly similar to the Yves Saint Laurent in finish, but this one feels a little bit more creamy versus moussey. Wear time for this lipstick is average and I think it is another nice option. This is a Rouge Antody lipstick from Givenchy. This is number nine, Rose Alibi, and this is essentially a lighter weight version of the one we just looked at, and it's a little bit more sheer and a little bit lighter in texture on the lips. Very comfortable, and I think this is a nice option but it seems more like a summer weight lipstick versus all year for most people. We are taking a look at a Kosa lipstick in the shade Rosewater. This is our best-selling shade. I think it has a beautiful satin finish. It is considered a clean beauty line and because of its use of natural ingredients, the lifespan of these lipsticks is not as long as some more traditional brands. It has a lovely creamy satin texture. It's a little bit firmer to go on than some, but definitely not as firm as the other ones that I have denoted as firm, such as the Lancome and the Cure Weiss. It has a very nice texture. The scent though, it's not really an added scent. It's that natural makeup kind of clay or kaolin type scent to it. So there is a little bit of a scent to it. Mine's probably starting to go a little off at the moment. This is the Pat McGrath Lux Trance Lipstick in Realness number 405. And I believe that this line is going through some repackaging right now. So it might be a good time to pick one of these up if you see it on sale. This has a lovely satin creamy finish to it. It does have a bit more drag when you apply it to your lips. It does have a little bit of a thicker texture to it. Texturally, it feels pretty similar to the Lancome Lapsalute Rouge, and I feel like they do have some similarities there. This is the Pat McGrath Lip Fetish Divinal Lip Shine in number 594, Belle Amour. And you can see that this is a high shine finish so it's essentially a satin lipstick with this high shine balmy finish on top of it. And although it's not a true satin finish, I just wanted to include it so you could see the difference with the Lux Trans lipstick. And you can see that the Lux Trans lipstick definitely has more of a creamy finish to it compared to this one. Next up, we have the Byredo lipstick in 128 Satin and the shade is called Commuter. And you can see that this is a lovely satin lipstick with a little bit of extra shine to it. And I think it's a really great formula. The longevity on this is pretty average. It's comfortable on the lips. It does feel a little bit thicker when you are applying it because there is a little bit of extra drag. 
but on your lips, that balmy texture really makes it feel comfortable and more of a medium weight texture. This is the Charlotte Tilbury Satin Lipstick in Bitch Perfect. And I think this lipstick has a fairly sheer cream finish to it. So it is a little bit lighter weight in opacity, but it does have that creamy texture to it and a little bit like the pigments in it are more opaque. So although the actual lipstick formula as a whole has some sheerness to it, the actual pigments are opaque enough that it gives you that cream finish versus something with a little bit more of a satin finish, in my opinion. And I think this lipstick is comfortable on the lips, but it's okay. Texturally, it has a medium weight consistency. One thing I'd like to know is as your tubes age, the opening, closing, lifting, and lowering of the lipstick can get a little gummy, if you know what I mean. So same thing can happen with the Pat McGrath tubes. Uh, so I think both of them suffer with a few issues with packaging. This is the Shiseido Visionary Gel Lipstick. And I don't think this is what you're looking for, Diane. This is kind of a thin feeling on the lips. It's very moisturizing, but the texture itself is thin and lightweight. And it does look very nice on the lips. Like the actual finish on the lips is beautiful. This is shade 211 Rose Muse, but it almost feels a little bit more like a moussey lip balm than a lipstick. So I wanted to include this so you can see the finish on this one. This is a Diorific lipstick from the Holiday line in 071 Glittery Rose. And I think this lipstick formula is okay. There is a little bit of extra drag when you drag it across your lips. And it's a thin to medium weight texture. It does stay put pretty well and it is pigmented. So I think those are all things that are positive. There is, however, a perfumey scent to this that some may find a little overwhelming. This is the Suku Moisture Rich Lipstick in shade 117. And this is going to be a very thick, balmy style lipstick. It is super comfortable, very pigmented. I don't think this is exactly what you're looking for, Diane, but I did wanna show this to you as well as the Vibrant Rich Lipstick from Suku up next. This is the Suku Vibrant Rich Lipstick in shade 111. And this one is really more of a satin matte lipstick. And it is not gonna be truly opaque. There is a little sheerness to this formula, but it does remain comfortable and long wearing on the lips. I was actually very impressed with the longevity of these. You can definitely, the pigment will remain all day and you can easily freshen up or retouch, but even with that noted, the actual comfort and pigment on the lips remaining in good condition still lasts above average compared to other lipsticks. This is the Chantecaille Lip Chic in the shade Amour, and I think this is a fantastic lipstick formula, but you can see from the shine here that there is a little bit more of that balmy texture. So it remains comfortable, stays on your lips probably about average time, uh, but it's not gonna be overly satin. This is the Chantecaille Lip Veil in Baobab, and this is gonna have a lighter consistency than the Chantecaille Lip Chic. It doesn't have as much of that balmy texture to it, and it's a little lightweight, yet it can be very pigmented. So some of these shades actually can be more pigmented than the Lip Chic version, and I think that's because the Lip Chic has a little bit more of that translucent balm present in that formula, which makes it a little bit thicker on the lips, whereas this lip veil is gonna have a thin texture. This is the Surat Lip Sleek in the shade Heaven. And again, this is gonna have a little bit more of that balmy texture to it. But if you are looking for 
something that is very comfortable and easy to throw on, this is a great option. It's probably not going to be best for a true satin lipstick, however. This is the Chanel Rouge Allure. This is the Chanel Rouge Allure lipstick in the Camellia line. This is number 637 Camellia Porpora. And this has a lovely satin finish. However, it is not always super opaque. I've noticed with some of the particular shades in the Camellia line that they can have a little bit of a thinner texture. And in that case, depending on how you apply it, you do want to make sure that you go over all of the areas to prevent any sheerness peeking through because it is going to be a little bit sheerer than some of the other Chanel formulas. This Camellia lipstick has a thinner texture on the lips and longevity is about average. This is the Chanel Rouge Allure lipstick from last year's holiday collection in number 857 Rouge Noble. And I want to compare this with the Camellia because this version and the ones from this year's holiday collection also have a slightly thicker texture on the lips than the Camellia. As I mentioned, the Camellia is a little bit more sheer and is a little bit thinner on the lips. This is going to be slightly thicker than that. It's also a bit more opaque. And I think the color glides on a little bit more evenly with these than with the Camellia lipsticks. This is a Rouge Coco lipstick from Chanel, and this is shade number 494 Attraction. And this is going to be a slightly thicker texture than the Rouge Allure formula, but this would go up to maybe a medium weight texture. So when I say that they're thicker, they're getting thicker consecutively, but this is infant, it's very small, very small increments. The Rouge Coco lipsticks are fairly opaque with one to two swipes and they remain comfortable on the lips and I think they are one of the most consistent formulas out there right now. And I personally think this would be a very nice option and you can see that they have a beautiful satin sheen and there is a touch of shine to it, but that shine does not it's not coming from one of those more balmy textures such as the Chantecaille or the Pat McGrath Lip Divinals. So it's more of a natural sheen and it gives it a little bit of a subtle luminosity. I hope those lip swatches were helpful for all of you. And Diane, back to your original question for a satin lipstick and I think with your requirements and what I know you have already tried, you may be interested in trying the Yves Saint Laurent or the Givenchy lipsticks. They seem like they might meet your requirements. I know you've already tried Chanel, which is fantastic. And I know that the Guerlain is a little bit more scented than what you would like. So barring those formulas, I definitely think the Givenchy and the Yves Saint Laurent formulas are worth a look. However, if you haven't tried the Rouge Coco formula specifically from Chanel, I think that might be worth another look as well. The Sisley and Pat McGrath Lux Trans lipsticks are also viable options based on our previous discussions. I think the Pat McGrath formula might feel a little bit heavier on your lips than what you are looking for, but I think the Sisley one might be a good option. However, just keep in mind it it's not going to be super long wearing. And just to follow up with what I have on my lips now, I'm still wearing the Chanel Rouge Coco lipstick in the shade Attraction that I tried on last, but I did top it with the Lisa Eldridge lip gloss in the shade Myth to add a little bit more berry to the shade. And that's it for our first episode of Makeup Mondays. And I hope this was helpful for everyone. I would love to see some more questions and comments down below in the comment box or DM me on Instagram at Alexis Jong. There is a link down below in the description box as well. But I'd love to know what you would like to see featured on Makeup Mondays. Now we won't necessarily have Makeup Mondays every Monday, but 
this will be a great way for me to kind of interact with you a little bit more and answer some of the questions that you have been sharing with me, especially those that require visuals or it's a little bit longer to type out. So I hope you find this series helpful. I'd love to know your thoughts. And again, don't forget to check out Sean's Beauty Bar over at Sean K Beauty for skincare related questions and other topics that Sean covers on her channel. Thank you so much for tuning in. And again, please be sure to share your thoughts and hit that like button. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you next time. Have a great day.